Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Garrison. I want to welcome you to this session of Humanity Rising. I'm now in California, uh, hence the change in my background. It's good to be here. I got to see my little grandson, Charlie Miko, uh, yesterday, who's two and a half months old and growing by leaps and bounds. It's so precious to see the emerging of life uh, surrounded by love and nurturance and care and affection. It's a, it's a beautiful thing uh, to watch uh, how love makes life grow. And so it's a real pleasure uh, to be here. I want to just uh, note it right at the beginning that Don Schmidt uh, just uh, notified me uh, just a little bit ago that he got caught in uh, flight delays and so was unable to uh, come here. He was actually uh, in Roswell, New Mexico. He was outside Roswell, New Mexico without uh, internet and was needing to fly to where he needed to be to get the kind of internet that he uh, requires to be on the Zoom. Uh, so we're going to miss him today, but we'll uh, reschedule. Uh, Don Schmidt will be providing uh, two courses uh, after uh, Richard Dolan completes his uh, on uh, his investigations. Uh, Don Schmidt is one of the most famous uh, and meticulous investigators of UFO uh, sightings. Uh, he is responsible for uh, building the Roswell Museum uh, of UFOs in Roswell, New Mexico. Uh, he is an extraordinary man and an encyclopedia, along with Danny Sheehan and Richard Dolan, of uh, all matters uh, UFO related. Uh, so he's a core faculty of our uh, certificate program at the New Paradigm Institute and uh, will be uh, back uh, and uh, probably providing a number of programs uh, over the next uh, several months. So what I'd like to do today is first uh, bring people up to speed uh, about uh, the programs, and then I want to turn to some uh, updates on various world affairs, uh, including, uh, very importantly, the uh, ceasefire uh, that was just passed by the UN Security Council uh, just about uh, 17 minutes ago, the UN Security Council uh, passed by a vote of 14 uh, to one abstention, which was the abstention by the United States, uh, to call for an immediate and lasting uh, ceasefire uh, in Gaza. I'll also be commenting on the events in Russia in the aftermath of the uh, terrorist attack against the uh, concert there uh, several nights ago. Uh, but first, I want to just emphasize uh, the excitement that many of us have had in attending uh, Danny Sheehan's uh, courses now complete. Uh, so our first uh, course in the history, law, and politics of the UFO uh, phenomenon is now in the archives. We had a very uh, exciting and I would say almost exhilarating uh, discussion uh, with uh, Danny yesterday um, with uh, most of the people who'd signed up uh, for his course. I think over 170 people signed up for his course. He'll be starting uh, his next course uh, this next Thursday uh, in a few days time and we'll all the courses will be uh, four weeks in duration, one lecture a week uh, over four weeks. Uh, so Georg will put the link uh, to that course so you can all sign up. And then that will be followed by two courses from Richard Dolan uh, and then two courses by Don Schmidt. And then we're going to be having courses uh, by Reed uh, and Marshall Summer. Uh, and uh, and others who were uh, bringing in uh, for the first ever certificate program in history, 
on the, uh, the facts pertaining uh, to the uh, UFO UAP phenomenon. And that'll be, of course, followed by the ubiquity university certificate on extraterrestrial awareness and communication. Uh, it, uh, it's very uh, interesting to see the response from Asher Lyman's uh, uh, session here on Humanity Rising uh, last Monday, a week ago uh, today, uh, and the enthusiasm for people that wanting to know how do you contact these extraterrestrials through a meditative technique that Asher has refined uh, over many, many years of uh, extraterrestrial contact. And so uh, the uh, aftermath, uh, the after session chat uh, that he uh, conducted lasted some two and a half hours. And there were so many positive responses. We're starting a little study group that Shannon and, and Stan are organizing with Asher. And we may uh, develop a course over the next several months uh, in uh, ET awareness. Uh, and communication. I want to draw attention to two things. Number one, uh, that for all of you who are interested in taking these courses provided by the New Paradigm Institute and uh, Ubiquity University, uh, you can uh, take those uh, and get a master's and PhD degree uh, if that's what you desire. And in fact, we're having a information session on the 17th of uh, April uh, in just uh, over three weeks time for all of you who are interested in our extraterrestrial studies program. I like our certificates, they're the first of their kind. Uh, there's some courses that you'll find in various universities. There's a program uh, uh, in uh, EXO uh, studies that's wrapped into uh, an integral studies uh, program, uh, but ours is really the first explicitly extraterrestrial studies program uh, uh, ever offered. And so the possibility and the opportunity to be part of the first cohort of uh, individuals that start to build uh, dissertations and the foundation, a rigorous scientific uh, foundation uh, that will be the basis upon which people conduct literature reviews for subsequent dissertations at a graduate level uh, in extraterrestrial studies is a very exciting uh, endeavor. Uh, it's actually historic. And so uh, we'll be uh, encouraging all of you to be part of this information session. Uh, Georg will put the link in the, the chat so you can begin to sign up. And then also I wanna draw attention to the growing community of people taking the courses and are interested in various aspects of extraterrestrial studies on our Ubiverse. It's, uh, it's very uh, dynamic. And uh, so anybody who's interested in an ongoing conversation uh, on our Ubiverse, uh, please uh, join and uh, you'll see the link uh, in the chat box and you can go to ubiquityuniversity.org uh, and our uh, Ubiverse uh, is right there uh, for you to sign up. Uh, and it's an alternative to Facebook. So we don't commodify your information or sell anything about who you are as it's done on all the other major social media platforms. Uh, so in a sense, it's, it's private uh, and you have the same capacity for ongoing threaded conversations as you do on on Facebook, except that you're not a commodity while you're while you're doing so. I also want to just let people know what the New Paradigm Institute is doing, and the reason why we become such an incredible attractor uh, to people of the stature of of uh, Richard Dolan and and Donald Schmidt and Marshall and Reed Summers and. Uh, Lou Elizondo and and uh, David Grush, the two whistleblowers that have become so famous uh, around the world, uh, who will be uh, participating in various ways uh, in our uh, programs. Um, when we launched the New Paradigm Institute 
which was really the brainchild of Danny Sheehan and John Mack back in the 1990s, uh, nearly 30 years ago, when John Mack, as the dean of uh, the Department of Medicine uh, at Harvard University, uh, was asked by the Pentagon to uh, examine some of these uh, Pentagon officials and others who were claiming that they had UFO uh, experiences. And at that time, uh, anybody who talked about UFOs was considered crazy. So they asked John Mack, a uh, very distinguished psychiatrist uh, at Harvard, to examine these people and find out what was wrong with them. They examined them and found out that they were perfectly sane and they were of sound mind. And that, in fact, there was a deep authenticity to what it was that they were bringing to uh, public attention. And then he began to realize that many of the people that he was talking to had actually experienced abductions. Uh, and as you remember from uh, past uh, Humanity Rising experiences where Danny Sheehan, who was his uh, general counsel, uh, and he was hauled up before Harvard and told that there's no way that Harvard University was going to countenance anything related to UFOs. Uh, but John Mack went ahead anyway and published a book called Abduction, uh, where he just laid out the stories of these people. And at that time, uh, uh, John uh, and Danny, I had the very deep privilege, of course, of knowing Danny for many, many years, as you all know, but I also knew John Mack and uh, uh, interacted with him in, in various ways and, and uh, uh, it was out of those discussions uh, between John Mack and Danny Sheehan that they began to realize that the only way to appreciate the profundity of extraterrestrials was to develop an entirely new paradigm for how human beings experience and understand the world. And that incubated over time. And then when uh, Danny again represented Lou Alizondo uh, in 2017, when Lou, who was the head of the uh, uh, Aerial Threat Investigation Committee, of the Pentagon, one of the highest ranking intelligence officials to be tasked to look at the uh, possibility of UFOs and the potential threat of UFOs when Lou Elizondo uh, wasn't given the information that he was needing, was beginning to be intimidated for the findings that he was uh, bringing uh, forth. Uh, he resigned uh, and uh, took information uh, to the New York Times uh, and it was on December 16th, 2017, that the New York Times in a front page uh, article uh, stating categorically that uh, U.S. government officials in the Pentagon and elsewhere know and had evidence of the uh, UFO phenomenon uh, that um, the dam began to break. Uh, that led, as we all know, uh, to the various hearings by the U.S. Congress uh, profiling David Grush and others uh, last July 26, 2023, and then the Schumer Amendment, uh, which uh, culminated on December 22nd of 2023, when Joe Biden, President of the United States, passed into law uh, that uh, the U.S. government is now on record uh, that uh, technologies of unknown origin, non-human technologies, and non-human intelligences exist, and that all the information needs to be brought to bear. Well, that's when, in the midst of all that, that the New Paradigm Institute began to uh, be activated uh, in Washington, D.C. And it was in August of last year that uh, uh, Danny uh, Sheehan 
uh, asked me to come back to Washington to head up the Washington office of the New Paradigm Institute because the time had come for not only for the scientific data to be forthcoming, which is now mandated by law, and there's going to be a lot of pushback and uh, so forth and so on, as is always the case uh, in a democratic process. Uh, the last example of which was the Aero Office, the All Domain Anomalous uh, Resource uh, Office, uh, saying that no, the UFOs don't exist, and and uh, there's absolutely no evidence that came out uh, about a month ago. Uh, and there's been incredible pushback, and all that is going to take place. But the toothpaste is out of the tube, as Richard Dolan, uh, the great UFO historian, uh, has said. And the disclosure is now in motion. So the New Paradigm Institute, working with people like Don Schmidt, Lou Elizondo, David Grush, <clears throat> Steve Bassett, and a range of others in the government, in the intelligence communities, uh, in the Senate, in the House, uh, are, are now beginning to realize that what is really necessary for humanity uh, is to really see this as an opportunity to establish a whole new paradigm of perception, experience, understanding of reality itself. I've talked before about uh, Thomas Kuhn's uh, Scientific Revolutions, uh, the book that was brought out uh, nearly 50 years ago by a physicist, a world-renowned physicist, where he said that what motivates scientific revolutions is when the current paradigm can no longer assimilate and account for all the data that actually exists. And first it denies the reality of that data because it doesn't fit into the paradigm. But so much new information begins to accumulate <clears throat> that finally, the old paradigm literally collapses and a whole new paradigm emerges. And that's what happened with Charles Darwin. The prevailing paradigm before Darwin was that uh, essentially God created the heavens and the earth in six days <clears throat> and then rested. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then all of a sudden, so much data accumulated that know that that's not what happened, that there was an evolutionary process over millions and in fact billions of years in which the human race is a constitutive part, a product of evolution. And that was a revolution in science that continues uh, to the present day. And now we're in the midst of an equally momentous shift in paradigm. And so the new Paradigm Institute has been established to assist humanity, literally, in expanding the boundaries of consciousness as we come to terms with the reality that we are not alone, that planet Earth is not isolated as the only place in the entire cosmos where life has evolved, and that in fact, not only has a life evolved elsewhere, but it's evolved much longer and to incredible levels of sophistication and advancement that we can't even imagine with our current physics and cosmologies. That's what's happening. The old worldview is being shattered by the reality that on planet Earth, there's extraterrestrials with alien spacecraft and there are alien bodies that have been found. And now what? how do we understand that? How do we understand that within a coherent worldview? It's not very easy. 
And that's why there's going to be a lot of push and pull as the institutions of governance and the institutions of science, which have been embedded in this old worldview, creak and crack and finally break, and then a whole new worldview will be brought in that encompasses the reality that we are not alone. And we're right at the beginning of that process. We're at that moment where after 75 years of denial, the cracks are beginning to take shape and shatter the old paradigm and a new paradigm is emerging. And that's why I'm so excited all the time, as you have all noted, being in the epicenter of Washington, D.C., as the government that's done the most to repress the information. It's the most closely guarded secret in the history of the world, guarded even more secretly and 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 fastidiously than even nuclear weapons technology. And all of a sudden now the cat is out of the bag. The toothpaste is out of the tube. So since December, we're in these first moments of disclosure. And that's why our extraterrestrial studies program is so exciting to people, why so many people are signing up, because finally they have the opportunity to find out not only what the facts are, but who these beings appear to be and how we can develop the capacity to contact and have actual intelligible communication with these beings. This is one of the most exciting moments in the history of the world. And it's happening with us. And so what I'd like to just share just briefly is what we're doing. Probably the most important project that we're mobilizing uh, is with the world religions. It's the world religions that are the most ancient of human institutions. You know, the government of the United States, for example, goes back 248 years. The Buddhist Sangha, the oldest contiguous institution in history, goes back so far over 2,600 years. The Taoists, the Muslims, the Jews. Abraham lived 1600 BC. It's 3,600 years ago, 36 centuries ago. All these religions, every single one of them, all the indigenous traditions, have memories of their primordial past about ETs that in some way extraterrestrial beings either created humanity or genetically engineered humanity and that they've been present in our histories. So as we come into our modern ET moment, one of the most important things we can do in terms of assisting us to, sh to, to, to develop this new paradigm is go back into our religious traditions. Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, and the indigenous traditions to find out what is in our collective memory. And then bringing that into public profile and then beginning the process of working out the theological and spiritual implications of the reality that we are not alone. Because as the national security state, the legacy formation that has kept this secret continues to pull back the only institutions in in the world that are strong enough and have the allegiance of their followers deeply enough to counterbalance 
the national security state are the world religions. So we've been embarking on a, on a three-year process to investigate all the stories, the memory, to work out the theological implications, and then to culminate the project with a major ecumenical conference uh, that brings together the world religious uh, leaders to really think through and promulgate uh, the reality that the religions of the world understand that we've been visited by extraterrestrials for a very long time. And it is time now for humanity to internalize that and view this new reality within a religious and spiritual frame. That's key. Because ultimately, any new paradigm is a function, not of fact, but of consciousness. And when the facts are assembled, consciousness will expand proportional because we all need coherent worldviews. So that's one of our, our projects. Another one of our projects, as you all know, is our training program, first ever, between New Paradigm and Ubiquity University that I've already described. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to have people all over the world taking training programs so we can all understand the facts and how to communicate with these extraterrestrials uh, who are present. Uh, we've been uh, setting up, thirdly, Citizens for Disclosure. In fact, I was in, in New York, in downtown Manhattan, last Thursday for the first uh, Citizen for Disclosure event outside Senator Schumer's office in Manhattan. It was an exhilarating moment to, to be there, and it had all been set up uh, by a, a gentleman there in New York uh, named Osvaldo, uh, who uh, is really deeply immersed in the whole phenomenon as an experiencer. Uh, and we had good press coverage. Uh, and uh, we're, as a result of that, there's groups being set up in New Zealand and Dominican Republic and various places all around the United States. So now citizens can come together. Uh, and any of you that want to set up uh, citizens for disclosure groups where you start to uh, un focus on uh, the ET phenomenon as a priority issue politically. Uh, what is the different candidates that are running for office? What's their position on the UAP, the Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena? We need to make it an election issue going in to the 2024 uh, November elections. You know, what does Biden, what does Trump think about the UFOs, the UAP? What are they going to do to enhance disclosure? These are all now areas where the public needs to be actively and consciously engaged. So that's one reason we're setting up these Citizens for Disclosure groups. We have a handbook. So any of you out there that are interested in getting involved with the ET disclosure, we have a whole mechanism uh, for uh, people to get involved at any level, anywhere. United States, anywhere around the globe. We're going to be doing a lot and probably have uh, monthly meetings where the Citizens for Disclosure groups can come together and share notes and what is happening in India and what is happening in different uh, areas around the world. And, and who knows, uh, the ETs may be watching and participate from time to time. One never knows. But we do know that the intelligences are here. They're observing us and have been for some time. And it is now our responsibility to take this seriously and to begin to work out the implications of the reality uh, that we are not alone. We're also working uh, to set up the Interparliamentarian Alliance for UAP Disclosure. As the United States goes through its process now of passing the legislation and now there's a UAP caucus and there's further legislation that's underway uh, that I've been in Washington going in and out of the Senate and the House with various people and meeting with people to try to get the next uh, iteration of legislation um, through is one reason why we wanted to affirm what Senator Schumer is doing. I mean, he's at the forefront of the UAP disclosure. He's an extraordinary thing. 
Uh, we want to be supportive. Um, and one of the things I would just say about that, and one of the reasons why it's so exciting for the training programs and the Citizens for Disclosure programs and the Interparliamentarian Alliance, is this is completely bipartisan. It may be the only issue in Washington and around the world where whether you're left or you're right or you're center, or you're up or you're down, whatever your ideology, dealing with the cosmic reality that we are not alone is bipartisan. It's transpartisan. And one of the most beautiful things that I'm experiencing is that I'm dealing with Trumpers and progressive Democrats, and it's it doesn't matter because we're it's a classic Ken Wilber transcend and include. It's a beautiful, beautiful experience to be interacting with people where the ideology that up to this point is keeping us separate from each other and antagonized against one another. We can say that doesn't matter. What matters is how do we now come together? And that's part of the new paradigm is that when we now interact with the extraterrestrials, partisan differentials no longer matter in the larger scheme of things because humanity, to survive our ET moment, has to come together in a transpartisan way as human beings where we are okay that there's left and there's right. It's okay that people support Trump or they support Biden because in the larger scheme of things, it is human unity with each other and with the larger ecosystem. That is the only thing that really matters. And within that unity, the diversity uh, becomes a source of creativity, not civil strife. So that's a project that we're doing. And in fact, I'll be hosting uh, here in Washington uh, people from Australia uh, in, uh, in just a little bit and been busily uh, connecting various of the Senate and House offices to prepare for this. And, and uh, the EU just last week had the first ever UAP forum <clears throat> organized <clears throat> by a uh, 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 gentleman from the Netherlands uh, with whom we're now in uh, contact. Uh, we're also working on getting pilots together. Uh, one of the calls that uh, was made in the House hearing uh, last July when the Government uh, Operations Committee of the House had the hearings in which David Grush uh, testified. There were two other Navy pilots that were talking about their experience. And now there's legislation uh, in the U.S. Uh, House uh, and Senate to protect pilots who are seeing these UFOs all the time because they're flying around the, 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 the atmosphere uh, that they can report this to the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA. Uh, and we're working with um, uh, uh, various people uh, to get pilot associations around the world to come together uh, so that other countries uh, can pass legislation protecting pilots that report UAP experiences uh, will not be punished or demoted or fired, which is what's been happening to many of them uh, over the last uh, 20, 30 years. And the reason why there's almost no reporting because they don't want to lose their jobs. So that's the pilots or another aspect of what we're doing. And then finally, uh, we've got lawyers that have been uh, volunteering their time. Uh, we got a dozen lawyers now working directly with uh, Danny Sheehan, uh, who's a constitutional litigator out of Harvard Law School par excellence, uh, that are going to be forming a, a boutique law firm inside New Paradigm Institute uh, to protect the, uh, protect the whistleblowers. Uh, and in fact... Um, uh, begin to organize 
uh, legal capacity on various aspects of the extraterrestrial phenomenon as uh, not only whistleblowers come into prominence, uh, there's apparently upwards of 30 to 40 uh, whistleblowers in waiting. And one of the things that we're uh, going to, if you go to the newparadigminstitute.org website, you'll see a call to action. And you can write your uh, senator, your House uh, member, if you're an American citizen, uh, supporting hearings uh, for whistleblowers so that they can come and deepen the information and the evidence uh, set uh, around uh, retrieved alien craft and retrieved alien bodies and various other bits of information that substantiate this reality uh, that we are not alone and that the extraterrestrials have been here uh, for some uh, time. It's a really an important uh, uh, consideration that all of us can engage in. So just go to you know the newparadigminstitute.org and you can sign up and 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 support hearings for the whistleblowers. And we now have a law firm essentially um, that's here to protect them against any kind of uh, duress. And so that's another thing that the new uh, paradigm institute. Uh, is uh, bringing into uh, bear uh, as we move forward. Uh, we uh, convened a high-level, very private, off-the-record uh, strategic consultation uh, in late February, where we brought a number of people together uh, that are involved in the range of these activities. Uh, it was a very, very uh, successful meeting. And out of that, uh, there was an agreement that this group will continue to work uh, together and collaborate uh, so that we can uh, share information of what's going on in Washington, what's going on in the EU, what's going on in other countries now, what's going on with the pilots, what's going on with citizen groups as they're beginning to form, how do we uh, optimize uh, the kind of faculty that will be attracted to our uh, training program. Uh, how do we promote it through social media? Uh, we uh, are uh, looking for resources. If any of you want to make a, a non um, a tax deductible uh, donation to a, a nonprofit, uh, you can do so uh, by going on to the uh, newparadigminstitute.org site. And you'll see a donate button. Uh, we we need resources to continue uh, this work. Uh, we're doing it as a public service, uh, and we're doing it for history. We're doing it for the furtherance of human consciousness at this very, very critical time. When, as you all know, life itself, as we know it, teeters on the brink of self-destruction. We reference the uh, Kogi prophecy which we've shown multiple times on Humanity Rising, uh, that the human race has been acting so egregiously against each other and against the earth uh, that we're now heading into a time of reckoning. So there's the, the ET phenomenon and the imperative of us expanding our consciousness to be able to encompass this new reality and within this new reality, a new way of relating with each other so that the differences that are ripping us asunder are surmounted with a harmony based on the reality that we are one single species in a very layered and complicated universe in which we're now being visited by beings far more advanced than we are. And we need to grow up into this new reality uh, in a way that brings human beings uh, into an alignment with each other in a very powerful way. And I personally believe, as I've stated multiple times, I think there's a relationship between 
the fact that we now teeter on the brink of the precipice and the ETs are descending from the heavens to tell us exactly what the Kogi and indigenous traditions around the world have been telling us. Stop killing each other. Stop destroying the environment. You have a precious, precious planet. Become stewards of this planet. Synergize with the planet. Open yourselves to cosmic reality in a way that embraces the new worldview, the new paradigm, and ushers in a new era of human awareness that not only are we not alone, we are one single species on a precious, precious planet. You know, as I've been reading voraciously and listening to every YouTube I possibly can about the extraterrestrials, one of the most consistent observations that people have reported who have communicated with the ETs is they tell us your planet is rare. There are not many planets that have the diversity of life, the exuberance of life that exists on planet Earth. We're a paradise, literally, as viewed from other beings coming to our planet. And when they see what we're doing to the planet and doing to ourselves, uh, it's a little shocking to them that we're squandering the paradise in such an egregiously ignorant and atavistic uh, way. So the, the extraterrestrial moment and the Kogi prophecy and the challenge to expand are all coming together at the same, at the same time. So that's the, the beauty of what we're, we're uh, dealing with. And it's within this context that we have to note the, the news within which this takes place, as painful as it is. I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the program uh, that the UN Security Council just passed after six months of genocidal war a resolution calling for an immediate and sustained ceasefire in Gaza. And this is simultaneous. He says, I always look for synchronicities as someone trained in Jungian depth psychology. Simultaneously, the Israelis have now barred the UN welfare uh, for refugees agency, UNRWA, from any further aid shipments to Middle and North Gaza, where starvation is already taking place. The Israelis are now cutting off any further aid. So you have this, what Jung calls this antinomy, We're two mutually exclusive, internally consistent realities, the imperative for a ceasefire and humanitarian relief, and the refusal for any humanitarian relief are happening simultaneously. The Israelis have violated virtually every UN Security Council resolution pertaining to Palestine in history. I don't know of any exceptions. They will, I'm sure, ignore this one, which will further place the United States in an excruciating position, having abstained on this one, unable any longer to hold out to world opinion, 
We'll see now what unfolds in Gaza. As now, in addition to the daily massacres of people, the Israelis now implement consciously, deliberately, a cessation of all humanitarian relief to North Gaza. What will the world conscience do? How do we bear witness to this fact? Several days ago, in Moscow, there was a, an attack that in latest account left over 150 people dead and hundreds wounded and the collapse of the concert hall. It was a shock to the world happening in the midst of the war in Ukraine. It was apparently four young men from Tajikistan, one of the former Soviet republics in Central Asia, uh, that uh, were responsible. They were apprehended uh, on their way to Ukraine, apparently, which raised immediately questions about intent uh, and sort of who knew what, when, about what happened. Uh, there was an initial information that this was ISIS. Apparently the ISIS website claimed credit, but then the facts didn't quite measure up. Historically, when ISIS uh, leads an attack of this kind, it's a suicide mission. Uh, the people that conducted the massacre uh, did not fight to the end. They sought to escape. Uh, paradoxically, in the same white Peugeot that they drove, it was caught on CCTV, closed circuit television, they got back in and drove off and was ra racing toward the uh, Ukraine border. Um, now that's strange. Why would they be going to Ukraine? Uh, they're from Tajikistan. They would have had to have known that the Ukraine border, because there's war, the Russians have got it barricaded on the Russian side, the Ukrainians. Why were they going to Ukraine? Why wouldn't they try to get back to Tajikistan? Why wouldn't they have gone to the Caucasus? And then it turns out that they were said that they were paid. Uh, why would ISIS, um, you know, Mujahideen, accept 5,000 measly dollars to com commit a crime of this magnitude? They must have known that they would be apprehended and uh, yet they apparently received $5,000 before and then we're going to receive another $5,000 so the stories don't add up. There's some indication that one of the uh, 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 Tajikistan individuals uh, had served in the Ukrainian army and was in Ukraine as recently as two weeks ago. What does that mean? Is that true? Um, what, what does it mean that um, a month ago the U.S. and uh, the British intelligence uh, warned um, U.S. and British uh, personnel in Russia uh, to stay away from public places, that there was some kind of an attack. Did the United States pass this information on to Russia? Did they not? There's now a debate and a contrary, or rather contradictory information uh, going on at, uh, at that level. Um, uh, we don't know what we don't know uh, coming out 
of uh, that attack. Uh, and uh, we'll probably be finding out information. As, as always, the truth comes out, uh, sometimes not right away, uh, but eventually. And we'll find out uh, what's, uh, what the facts are. But it's another indication, my friends, like with the genocide in the Middle East and all the turbulence around the world, uh, that the ET moment, is happening within the context of a turmoil on the planet and a dysfunction at the level of our governance uh, where the United Nations Security Council, you know, can just be ignored uh, and there's no, it's, it's done with impunity because Israel knows that nobody's going to do anything because they're protected in the end by the United States, which even as they've acquiesced to an immediate ceasefire, continue to give the weapons uh, and the wherewithal for the Israelis uh, to do exactly what they're doing with the full support of the U.S. military. Uh, and in, in Ukraine, um, what's the relationship between this catastrophic act of terror uh, and what's going on in Ukraine and solving a problem that human beings should be able to solve. There's no reason for Jews and Palestinians who are cousins, who are both Semites, there's no reason for them to be at this level of hostility. There should be a single unitary state of Israel-Palestine where Jews and Palestinians work together and live together just like people do in most countries around the world. There's no reason for an apartheid state. There should be a unitary state where Jews and Palestinians work together. There should be no reason for a war in Ukraine, Russia and Ukraine, Ukraine and Europe, Europe and Russia should be in a single integrated economic and security zone. That's what Gorbachev proposed uh, that's what was initially agreed. And there is no reason why the war needs to continue other than the consciousness. The consciousness that's locked in an old paradigm of human relationship. Or somehow I think I have the right to do anything I want to do to somebody else that doesn't look like me. And you're thinking the same thing about me. And thus we arm ourselves when peace and prosperity could be as quickly achieved as a change of paradigm. And that's why with humanity rising, Day by day, we're trying to both challenge, but also cultivate expansion of consciousness, what Plato called the, the, the enlargement of the soul, so that whatever is happening, we can wrap our arms around it, wrap our hearts around it in a way that brings the solutions that we, we all seek. That's that's the, the, the reason why I'm here day by day by day is because I believe passionately that if people come together and take counsel with each other in a spirit of respect and a spirit of loving kindness, there's not a single problem out there that cannot be quickly, easily solved. And it's our inability to change consciousness, change paradigm that actually constitutes the major part of the predicament uh, that we're in. So holding these all together, the light and the dark, the good and the bad, in a spirit of deep compassion for all being, is what we seek to represent day by day in all of our broadcasts. And I know that 
Sometimes I make people a little uncomfortable when I bring in the multifariousness of reality. Uh, but that's what we're called to hold at this time in history. We got to hold it all. We have to look it all in the eye. We have to embrace it all with a heart that's bigger than all the pieces and filled with the compassion that can make all those disparate parts cohere peacefully and lovingly as a whole. So thank you everyone for uh, indulging me today as I stepped in right at the last minute uh, for uh, Don Schmidt. We'll be having him back uh, in uh, just a little bit when we can fit him back into our schedule. Uh, and I'll bring this session now to a close. Uh, those of you who are interested, uh, please join the after chat. Uh, you'll see the link in the chat box, and then uh, you received it in your Zoom reminder uh, for today, uh, and we can uh, deepen our discussion. But I want to just take a moment as we close uh, to thank everyone for your dedication and your ongoing support. Uh, this is an extraordinarily loving uh, community. Uh, I feel loved. I love you all, as you all know. Uh, I feel a deeply held commitment to sustaining our broadcasts over time. Uh, and I hope that what we offer day by day is something that feeds not only your mind and expands your heart, but deepens your soul. Because if we can hold all these aspects of who we are together as a community, we model the future we know is possible for the entire human race on this precious, precious life infused planet. So thank you everyone. See you in the after chat. Bye for now.